This conference will now be recorded. All right, I'm going to call to order the uh, Town of Howard Board of Water and Wastewater Commission's meeting agenda for Thursday, December 3rd, 2020 at 1.05 p.m. Uh, I'm going to take a roll call. Uh, Alan? Here. Yeah. Judith? Here. All right, we're all here. And we also have Dan and Sandy, and I believe Tracy's on the, on the call as well. Yeah. All right. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask everyone to mute their phones unless you want to speak so there's no background noise. Um, I'm going to look for a motion to approve the consent agenda for minutes from November 5th, 2020. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judith. I'll take a vote by roll call. Alan? Aye. Judith? Aye. And it's an eye for myself. Thank you. Uh, we have no abatements. So we'll move on to the old unfinished business, uh, FY22 wastewater budget. <clears throat> Dan or Sandy? I can't hear you, Dan. There we go. Mute got me all, all messed up. <laughs> so what's um, I, I expect what's, better from you. What's included in the packet is um, Sandy had, had prepared a uh, version of the budget more consistent with what the board's used to seeing. Um, so she had taken the, the big matrix that, that we've been looking at the last few meetings and reduced it down into the same format that, that we prevent, uh, present the water department budget in. Uh, the only the only difference from here as to what was previously presented is the IMA contract operations expenses was reduced from three hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. Um, I I made that call myself as we have all discussed. There was the three hundred thousand dollar figure um, previously, and at this point, we still haven't had the opportunity to confer with Chatham, um, but as as we've mentioned before with the vehicles and other things that were included in the original contract operations estimate uh, that should should go down. So I was hesitant to put it in at 300,000 and, and caused a bunch of uh, a big headache, if you will, when, when it, we anticipate it going down. Um, other than that, the budget remains the same. Um, there's still a couple things missing uh, from both budgets, the indirects, um, we're still waiting on indirect figures from the finance department. One of the things that we're going to see this year is a transfer of some indirect from the water department to the sewer department budget for health insurance and things like that. At least that's my, my understanding from latest conversations. So once those figures are provided, this budget will need to be revised again. Um, but at this point, this is, this is where we're at with, with present data. And this is what's been entered in. So, Sandy, if I miss anything, please jump in. Uh, yeah, I just would like to add that um, another change is the two one uh, percent cola was added to salary and wages in both budgets. So, when it was added to water, it reflected the numbers in uh, the wastewater budget. But that was the only other change uh, to the wastewater, um, and actually moving forward, it's the water budget too was the 1% COLA. Um, question. Uh, under contract. Thank you, Sandy. Dan, uh, two questions. Go ahead, Alan. Oh, OK. Um, under contract operations, what would that have included? So that's going to include the operators from Wesson and Sampson for doing the daily oh, site visits oh yeah. and um, inspections of the decommissioning Title V uh, systems, installation inspections for sewer connections, uh, you know, all the, the general operational things. Okay. Okay. All right. You had said that before. I forgot. Okay. I'm good. Dan, did you say that Chatham still has not responded to you? 
Not yet. So I have, um, I have, I've been in contact with Joe in administration, and he, uh, it's my understanding, he's reaching out to Jill, the town manager in Chatham, to, in hopes of getting conversations moving. I, I got to be honest, I'm having some concerns that we can't even get a response from them to put our yeah. budget together, but yet we're going to be running a, a multi-million dollar operation. I mean, we, be, we, need, we need better communication than this. I agree, 100%. Is there, is there anything I can do, or do I need to make a phone call, or are we gonna let Joe? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think Joe to Jill over in Chatham will. I mean, hopefully, will will incite some conversation. Um, it's it's not just on our end. Uh, you know, folks from Weston and Sampson have been trying to get the conversation going as well, and they've they've been up a stalemate as well. So. How long we, how how long have we been trying to get in contact with to get a response about the budget? Um, first conversation started. I believe the first email I sent uh, was November fifth, and that was following a phone call. So I called, um, didn't wasn't able to get a hold of uh, Bob. So I sent an email to Bob on the fifth. I followed up again. I believe it was the ninth or twelfth to. Uh, Bob as well as the DPW director and then followed up again um, I believe it was a week or two ago um, with another request. <clears throat> Can I ask a question? Uh, Bob Duncan, the natural resources director. Uh, how about a call? Judith? Judith? Uh, hold on a second. Hey, Judith, go ahead. No, I just I just wanted to ask is um, in the past has it been a challenge having the back and forth with Bob or has it had to go through the elected officials first kind of thing? Um, last year with the, the, the I guess really the first development of an operating budget for the sewer department um, the budgets were provided to us I don't I believe I got it from Carol um, at the time last year, who I believe received it from her counterpart in Chatham. She's also aware of the conversations. I don't know if she's had conversations with her counterpart in Chatham this year. Um, I can follow up with her, but it, it hasn't, no, it, to, the short answer to your question is, is no, it hasn't been um, this way in the past. Okay, thank you. I don't know if it's just attributed to, you know, the, the current world affairs, COVID, you know, the different restrictions that they may be dealing with. Um, but whatever the case, it's it's running up against the uh, the timeline here. So, well, I understand we're living in a different world, but the department doesn't close, and services still need to be to be um, handled. So, it, it, uh, I can see you know one missed phone call, one not non return phone call, but several attempts is as far as I'm concerned unacceptable so um, my, my other question Dan is um, the wastewater budget so it went down to two hundred and eighty eight thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars thousand let me see from which version I'm looking at FY22 two-year order to connect it's about um, it's uh, 11, 11 pages in. 11 pages. Okay. Oh, the, that 483 figure? Sorry. I've I was looking at the one under. Pages. I'm looking under uh, how much only expenses. Is that what we're talking I think you said you reduced it from 300000 to 200000 So that was only the figure that, that is only the color figure. red. Color red. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. So that that uh, okay, I'm all set. That fixed, fixed cost, but the the okay. full budget is that bottom right cell. Okay, I'm good. All yours. Um. All right. So I guess it, are we good with sewer? 
Yeah, as good, good as we can be, I think, at this point. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be without any actuals from our chat, but I guess for now. What, what, are these, what does this do, Dan? Um, so budget, some budget entries into Munis are due tomorrow, the 4th. Um, <laughs> generally, if there's adjustments after the 4th, they can be made at, at some point in the future. The finance department does lock the budget so they can't be edited by the departments. Um, but that usually doesn't happen for some time until after, you know, where we're at today. Um, have right. you talked, Joe, about this, our town administrator? Yes. Yeah, I, I spoke with Joe this past uh, this past week, a week following my last email correspondence to them. Um, mm -hmm. So he is aware, and 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 I know Larry is aware as well. Um, so. Okay. All right. All right, you want to move on to water budget for FY22, Dan? Yeah, Sandy, would you mind if I hand it over to you as uh, yep. instrumental in the edits? Yeah, yeah no problem. Um, so I put in the packet a uh, memorandum from the finance director uh, regarding the FY22 budget. And she um, provided a lot of uh, guidelines um, that, uh, with along with some history for the utilities, electricity and gas um, and bulk fuel, as well as the COLA uh, increase of 1% to be added to salary and wages for uh, FY22's budget. So what I did was updated um, all the salary and wages with the 1%, which um, trickled down to, you know, of course, standby and all the salary and wage items, really. And then I um, attributed the portion of the salary and wages to wastewater um, that Dan had prepared. So the only change that was made um, in what you've been presented is to salary and wages. Um, the item, you know, as far as utilities, uh, we have always uh, projected um, our utility budgets, um, you know, well. And so I did leave those, um, you know, the projections we made um, the same. So I didn't make any changes to the utilities. Uh, Carol, the finance director rec recommended 0%, uh, no increase to the utilities. And, um, uh, you know, our budget is a little bit different. And we, uh, you know, depending on how much we're pumping, we're using a lot of electricity. Um, and as I said, the way we, we've budgeted in past years um, have uh, been sufficient. So Unless you object, um, uh, we, you know, I think keeping the budget as far as utilities the same as what Dan and I presented at the last meeting, um, then uh, we will keep it the same, unless you object or want to change it. Uh, any questions uh, yep. regarding the the water budget, uh, Alan? Yeah. Uh, under meters, read devices and supplies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are we heavy on supply? I mean, I'm thinking we're going to be issuing second meters to uh, a lot of residents and what have you in the coming year. Uh, and uh, we're still on a meter replacement program uh, within the department. Uh, I'm just wondering why we're backing off on the, uh, uh, we had 180,000 in, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 180,000 in the 2021. So are we in good shape there or uh, where do we stand? Dan, if I could just first just say that, um, we let we lowered or decreased the uh, this line item uh, because this was in an effort to have a level funded budget, 
Oh. And it, so it did, um, at the last meeting, the board supported a rate increase effective July 1st. Effective. And so that did change, um, actually, our scenario a bit. And uh, it does give us room um, to increase that line item a little bit more if we want to. Um, Dan, uh, what are your thoughts on that too? <laughs> yeah, and another another component to that. So with with the instruction to to provide a level funded budget, um, you know we have we had to seek areas to decrease. Um, and with the pandemic and the reduced access to private properties, that seemed like a reasonable place to reduce because the meter, you know, we're still changing out meters that, that, you know, emergency or things of that nature, but we're still continuing in, in, in a relatively reduced capacity as far as entering people's homes whenever possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, those two things combined really were the, the impetus for, for dropping that. Okay. Can I ask a question, Gary? A question, Gary? Yes. Um, just to, to follow up on Alan's question, it's kind of more general. If, um, if we have another national, like if we have a, a significant shutdown, let's say like a three month shutdown, just hypothetically, um, do we have enough uh, supplies in general? Um, if there's a stoppage in the national um, industry supply cycle for three or four months? Yeah, so- COVID related. Right. So industry, uh, well, so industry supply chain relative to, you know, things like water treatment chemicals and stuff like that is a continued topic of discussion with DEP on their monthly COVID response uh, calls. So they're hosting public uh, calls every month with public water suppliers to discuss any, you know, new information, track any supply chain issues. I'm not aware of any to date that, that they're foreseeing. Um, you know, especially in this time of year, it's fortunate that although it's winter and the, the COVID cases are rising, the water consumption is, is very low. So in terms of, you know, water-related uh, assets and, and supply chains, I think we're, we're, we're pretty stable there. Um, okay. So the state isn't going to stockpile in advance I, to support I'm not aware, municipalities or anything? I'm not aware of any any thoughts on that yet. Um, okay. With respect to PPE, um, you know, we did just do a resupply and we've been having, so we, we resupplied, we restocked uh, hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, disinfectant spray, um, purchased another batch of uh, reusable cloth masks for, for all the staff. Um, you know, and, and we're still seeing some of those initial orders we purchased back in in February, March, April of last year, still just starting to trickle in some of the first mask purchases we picked up. Um, so I'm I'm confident in our our current supply. Okay, thank you. About one other thing, uh, under hydrants, uh, you have nothing funded there. Uh, you, have you got a stock of them? Or where are we at on that? hydrants? Was moved. Hydrants. Oh. The, the monies were moved out of the hydrant line item in 2019 and consolidated, I believe, Sandy, if you know off the top of your head, I believe it was pipe valves and fittings or water works. That, that's correct. It was uh, combined with um, pipes, valves, and fittings. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Dan, I got, I got a couple questions. Um, so um, last meeting, I was brought up the uh, building and ground maintenance that went up to $45,000. And then I'm looking two, two lines down to building maintenance agreements. And that went up 13000 So what's the difference between building and grounds maintenance and then building maintenance agreements? Mm -hmm. So the building and grounds maintenance, 
are relative to maintenance of our physical, you know, facilities, the pump stations, okay. the, you know, those sorts of things. Building maintenance agreements, um, I believe, so those, uh, Sandy, why? Yes, of course. Um, that includes the big increase to the building maintenance agreements is to cleaning, office cleaning. Um, yes, so that's primarily, we added on the treatment building because we spread out our administrative staff. Um, so we're spread out more. So now that building is being cleaned regularly. In addition, we have daily COVID cleaning Monday through Friday that we factored in right now it's being reimbursed um but i don't know how much longer that's going to last right so we factored that's, in I'm covid really cleaning mm -hmm. okay yeah. okay uh, my other question is so i see in the fy22 water budget the note salary wages like you said the one percent for the coal increase and then the salary distribution to uh, wastewater, superintendent, 50%, and administrative and meter tech, 5%. So are we going to be splitting your salary now out of the wastewater budget? Yes. And the last uh, water budget that I presented or that was presented to you at the last meeting, um, Dan's salary and was not split out and separated between the two budgets. So that is a change in the budget you're looking at is now half of Dan's salary is in the wastewater budget as well as um, the four staff members, 5% um, of their salary will be paid for from the wastewater budget. So those are the changes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions regarding the uh, FY 2020 budget, water budget? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we adopt it. I second that. Uh, second. second uh, okay, uh, any further discussion? I'll take a vote for, by roll call. Alan? Aye. Judith? Aye. And it's an eye for myself. Thank you. All right, let's see. Right. New business, draft sewer rules and regulations. All right. So I sent out this morning a final draft, um, which I believe made it into the packet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it appears as though they did. So this this final draft that you that you've been provided with incorporates all of the various edits, uh, which can be found on the edit log, also included in the packet, and is ready now to be shared, distributed, and and move forward towards a rate hearing, or a uh, public hearing for the rules and regulations. So this is um, the complete package, if you will. I rem I left the, the changes are still all in red, as you can see. That's a, a one button click, we'll, we'll remove all that and consolidate. So these are all of the edits. Um, let me just make sure it didn't. So I guess I would ask, you haven't had a whole lot of time to review it. I apologize. I've been uh, working on this as well as a wastewater presentation for next Tuesday, so I've, I wasn't able to get it out sooner. But uh, uh, um, Dan, can we can we put a can we put a hold on the vote on this so we can look vote on our next meeting? Because I literally just sat down at one o'clock mm -hmm. and I haven't I, I haven't even looked at it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's me. Is that okay with Alan Judith? No, that's great because I haven't had a chance to review it today either. So, no, okay. I, um, Alan, I'm fine with, with doing that. I, I just got. Okay. Uh, I've had a chance to look at some of it, but um, the uh, one thing that I think should be added, uh, so the average person would know, 
uh, there's a lot of abbreviations in the rules. And I was wondering if it shouldn't be an abbreviation page or uh, a... Mm. Uh, like a glossary. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that one would know what those abbreviations are. Yeah, I can, um, yeah, let me, I can go through and yeah. come back through for any and see if there's, see if I, I can add them, I believe, I can add them to the definition section in Article 1. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, uh, what is it, POTW? Stuff like that. Owned. Yeah. yeah. A U I or L U E or I mean it's or U yeah. uh, U L I or, yeah, I can't I don't remember that one. But um there's a bunch of them in there, you know. So for the average soul reading it other than that uh, and then Dan or Gary, could one of you just um just for the general public, just explain what the process is to to approve these with regards to the public. Yeah. So when when the board decides to move forward towards a public hearing, um, the documents will be provided to the town clerk's office. We will advertise in the newspaper, and we'll have to have a public hearing in in open session. To allow the public to comment on the rules and regulations, um, and the draft will be online, obviously, yes. right? The draft will be online um, as well. Clerks, yes, and available at our office. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Are right, we all set with um, the sewer rules and regs? All set. Yep. All right, let's move on to uh, let's move on to the Pleasant Lake storage tank. So just a quick update on that today. We had uh, our pre-bid meeting this past week. Uh, it was on, I believe it was Monday. Um, so we had a handful of contractors come out to the site and inspect. Uh, following that, we had the tank cleaning company, Underwater Solutions. They arrived yesterday. So they're doing the pre-cleaning to the interior of the tank bowl so that the, the tank's clean and ready for the, the crew when, the, when we open bids. Um, so that tank has been taken offline and drained. The cleaning company is actively washing today, and um, that's where we're at. So we have a bid opening for that on the 10th, which I believe is next Thursday, a week from today. Nice, thank you. Any questions about the uh, Pleasant Lake tank? All right, let's move on to the department operations. So this I just wanted to touch upon. Um, effective Monday, the town has, has moved towards a hybrid remote working model. Um, so with the holidays coming and the, com the communal spread of COVID taking place primarily in private residences and homes, you know, the reality is that through the holidays, people are going to ultimately break the rules and see their family. So what this is, is an attempt to try and mitigate, you know, COVID getting into the town and getting into the department. So we are not operating in such a restricted way that we were when we first went into lockdown and, you know, in the spring, um, but we have now three, uh, the admin staff are, are operating in a rotational schedule. Um, Steve and Jay, as Sandy alluded to earlier, you know, we've spread out our administrative staff. So Steve and Jay have moved into the treatment building. So they, they are working to, you know, coordinate amongst each other so that they're not in the same building at the same time so that we can try to prevent, you know, should there be an instance of, of someone getting COVID, it, it limits the possibility of it spreading within the department. So we're still, working every day, the digging crew is still digging, uh, you know, all of our, our tasks are still getting done. Um, we've developed a work list to keep people working independently when, when we have the option to break them up. Um, so that's where we're at with that, so. All right. And the FY22 capital request. So, 
I wanted to touch upon this. Um, I had a meeting with Joe a couple weeks ago. Um, the capital requests from FY21 have been bumped to FY22. So that includes our well exploration product, uh, project. And we also had on the plan for 22 was engineering monies for the design of the Route 28 water main replacement project. That came up new to the plan was the drinking water protection grant. Um, so we're, we're, we're intending to pursue that grant funding. It will require an authorization at town meeting to accept the grant funds and, and acquire the property. So I met with Joe and introduced him to the project so we could make sure we have an article in town meeting should that should that grant be advertised and move forward that we have a placeholder to, to act on it. Um, above and beyond that, with, with COVID and, and everything else, you know, the sewer project and whatnot, we know that the prices are going up. So one of the things that I've done in the, over the past couple weeks was uh, communicate with GHD about our Route 28 water main project. So if you recall when we put the 28 project on our capital plan, it was a, a number, probably, I don't know if it was three or four years ago when we started getting all those breaks and, and we, we said, okay, we gotta do something about this. At the time we made that decision, we were looking at a st uh, an area from Lower County Road in 28 up to Lothrop, which was really where all the breaks that we'd experienced were centralized. After the putting that on the capital plan, if you recall, I believe it was last New Year's Day, maybe, that we had the water main break on 28 at the Herring River Bridge. So I had asked uh, GHD to look at the project area and then also if they could update the budget number so that when we start talking about capital items this year, we have an updated engineering figure, an updated estimate for construction costs so that everyone has the latest figures as, as we discuss our capital plans. So they're working on putting together a, a, an up more accurate cost estimate for that. But the addition of that section of 28 from Lothrop to the Herring River Bridge adds in about another half mile to the project. So the so, back of the napkin numbers right now are looking like the, the construction itself could be anywhere between five and six million dollars with the engineering being you know four to, to six hundred thousand so one of the components that i i'm looking to include in this project when we did experience the break at the herring river bridge that prompted us to you know go under the bridge to tie the pipe back in the pipe under there is not it, it will it has seen better days um you know, and one of the things that's taking place from the dentist line to the other side of the bridge in 2024, Mass DOT is going to be repaving 28 to the opposite side of the bridge. So, what I'd like to include is replacing the pipe that hangs under the bridge, as we did on Lothar Bav, so that we can get that connection tied in on, on the dentist side of Herring River prior to paving. So, the, the additional half mile would add the bridge replacement and then replacing the main from 28 from Lothrop to, to the bridge. So it's a considerable increase, um, you know, from what we had previously on our capital plan. At the time we put it on there, it was about a million bucks a mile to do water main. Um, you know, the price has gone up. We also have Route 28, which we're contending with, which the restoration um, requirements are, are much greater. And one of the things that I was informed about in talking with GHD is the survey requirements for the engineering for a mass DOT project. Um, so they have to do a pretty extensive as-built or existing condition survey for a state road prior to doing their design. And I believe he said the average price about 10 to 15 bucks a liter foot for the survey. So we're looking at, you know, a, a, I believe it was a couple hundred thousand dollars alone just just to get that survey done. Um, so but like I said, that break that we had, I'm sorry, that break that we had at Herring River, that was not under the bridge. That was at that telephone pole right before the bridge, right? Right, right next to the bridge. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that that pipe under the bridge was uh, put in there when the bridge was rebuilt. 
uh, it's been there a long time. Yeah, and uh, you know the 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 pipe insulation, you know, it's never yep. ideal, right, to have a pipe hanging above a saltwater <laughs> river, you know, with with salt air and everything. You know, the moisture, the insulation, um, you know, the hangers that that the pipe are hanging from are are considerably deteriorating. Yeah, I mean, some of them, some of them are missing. Um, you know, so it, it, it's one of those things that I would be happy to look at, but not want to touch. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we could have bigger, bigger problems as we go along. Mm. Right. All right. So I just, I, GHD is preparing a, a more formal cost estimate. I provided them with the initial uh, area. One thing I still got, I, I owe them is a list of services and size uh, for you know each service within the stretch so we can get get better idea on quantities so I'm intending on I've been trying to get that to them um, once I get through the wastewater presentation that's that's next on my list so so um, the rest of this uh, water main except for what's been replaced because of repairs is probably 75 85 years old yeah okay yeah, and then, you know, it's it's it, it's in a, it's a big jump. I mean, you know, to go from and and one of the things that's you know procurement has been evolving in the town for you know really the whole time I've been here in the five years. And although there seem there there is at times uh, it can seem to go slow and things like that. But what I can say is that the procurement process has become much more regimented in that. You know, we were not escalating our capital plan on an annual basis, right? We all know that these projects escalate, and how many times do we we see situations where we request money, open a bid, and the and the funding isn't enough to, for the bid price? You know, so there's been a lot of changes in the way that things are done. And I think for the better, and I think you know for transparency. And this is this is an exercise of that, and and up getting these updated prices. So. You know, once we have a, a better handle on the magnitude of the project, we can dig back in and look what that that's going to look like as far as a debt obligation payment, and what that's going to mean for you know water rates or or revenues. Yeah, the other the other day I was asking, uh, I was uh, commenting to Sandy about how many miles of pipe uh, in town. Uh, that were installed in the late 30s, 40s, and so on down the line, you know, 75 years old, 50 years old, 20. I believe I have the ability to extrapolate that all out of our GIS database. I'm going to have to go in. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't the one who put the information in. I know that uh, when we look at our, our water system maps on the GIS, you can click that asset and it will tell you the, the date of installation. Um, you know, those were entered by someone, so there is a possibility that some of them may not be, you know, 100% right on, but I think I can put that together pretty easy and get you, uh, you know, get get some quantities, so. Yeah, be, I think it'd be interesting to know because it's going to reflect on, you know, most of our capital budgets from here on out. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Thanks, Dad. Jerry, anything? No, good. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to our superintendent's report. All right. Just a couple quick things. I uh, just wanted to let you folks know that with the, if you recall, the water bottle filling station um, letter of support that you guys okay. had prepared. So. The CPC meeting for that presentation is tonight, so I will be participating in that meeting this evening. Um, I did speak with Dave Nixon, chair of the CPC, a couple weeks ago. Um, the applicant, because the filling stations are proposed to be put on town land, the applicant has to be in town. So instead of Patrick being the applicant, um, Joe Powers' as administrator will be the applicant, Myself will be the project manager, and Patrick will be the um, 
I don't remember what the third person there was on the application. So that's one change. Um, another change to that article or that that CPC article is the bike trail parking lot off of Headwaters Drive is not a part of the rail trail that is owned by the town of Harwich. So because it's it's not owned by us, we can't install a filling station there. So I'm I'm working with Patrick to try to pick another location from between Town Hall and the Chatham line that that runs behind uh, our facility here and next to our treatment plant in off a of depot. So we have to iron out that fourth location. Uh, just trying to meet with them earlier this week to walk it, but with the rain to we can do it. Um, so that is all for that. Um, as I mentioned quickly earlier, the Board of Selectmen are having a, a meeting on Tuesday and I, I intend to be giving a presentation. The meeting is intended to be solely for the topic of wastewater. So there is uh, the topics of East Harwich, Phase 2, DHY, and the IMA. Um, so that will be on Tuesday. And then lastly, that the all flushing has concluded, effective this week. Dan, is Tuesday's meeting an informational meeting or is it information and the board is gonna be taking decisions? I don't believe there's any intended action. I believe this is intended to be more of a informational, uh, conversational meeting where we cash out you know, a lot of the, the intricacies of where we're at with, with the CWMP and DHY and things like that. Okay, thanks. And that is, oh, one last thing. I almost forgot we had a, a pretty considerable <laughs> water main break. <laughs> How could I forget? So we had a pretty big water main break. Um, days are getting mixed, is that Monday? I'm going to pull up a picture. I can actually, uh, you should be able to see it through my camera here. So it was over Tuesday, morning, Tuesday, yes, Tuesday morning. So uh, retrospectively looking at the SCADA system, the break occurred at 2 a.m. in the morning. It was called in at 6 a.m., 6, 6.30. So by the time we got there, I estimate approximately 900,000 gallons um, was lost. And there was a fair amount of damage to one of the properties there on the street there. So if I can record this here, so you can see, that is all water. You can make that out. Um, What's that? Where, where was the location? It was located on Periwinkle. Um, so at the end of Chatham Road, left yeah. on to 28, and then the first left into that neighborhood. Yeah. Um, it was a pretty pretty big break. There was a couple feet, two, three feet of water in the basement of the, the house that was at the bottom of the hill. The car that was parked oh, on the floor there was filled with water. Um, so it was a it was a big one. It didn't help that it rained for you know a good twenty four plus hours before that, and the water didn't have really anywhere to go. So that's, all. that's one way to restore the water table. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Um. Commissioner's report. I'm good. I'm good. And next meeting. Next meeting. Uh, two weeks out would be the week ending the 19th, so the 14th through the 18th. Any um, anything work best for anybody? Uh. Let me ask this. Uh, is there a need to have that next meeting? Uh, or could we have it after Christmas? Um, you know, so with the bid opening being on the 10th. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. You may need to act on a notice of award. Well, if we could meet on Thursday the 17th in the morning, um, got the Affordable Housing Trust at one, and that way, because we also need to, to confirm the rules and regs, right? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, and uh, in December, I'm not going to be able to do it earlier than one o'clock. Or could we do it at or, three? Or the, on the Wednesday? We can do three. Yeah, uh, we can do three on Thursday, or what? You know, one o'clock or whatever on that Wednesday. Three I, on I Thursday make, would be preferable for me. Yeah, I can. Just I can to do keep that. Keep it all uh, in one day. Alan. Okay. Uh. Yeah, the 17th at 1, is that what you want to do? 17th at 3. Oh. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll do that. That's good for everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Does that take care of anything, Dan, that would be outstanding? Yeah, and, and I can keep you guys in the loop as well with the bid opening being on the 10th. Um, you know, I, in the holidays, we got to kind of be good with scheduling all this stuff so we can make sure we get it done in a timely fashion. So yeah, I guess right. I think that's a great starting point, I guess. So I would just ask if uh, there's a need to shift it one way or another. Uh, you know, after the 10th, I can, I can, we can reach out and take it from there. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for now. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, a motion to adjourn. Still moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second. And there a is. vote by roll call. Alan? Aye. Judith? Aye. And it's knife myself. Uh, thank you guys and uh, have a good day. You as well. Thanks, guys, too. I thought you